If your weakness, failures, and shortcomings are a constant discouragement for you, be encouraged because in today's video, we'll learn why our weakness in Christ is actually one of our greatest assets. Stay tuned. Welcome to Beloved Women with me, Christina Patterson, where we encourage, equip, and empower women in the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's Word. For free Bible study resources and to join our worldwide sisterhood, be sure to visit BelovedWomen.org. Hello, Beloved, and welcome to Beloved Women with me, Christina Patterson. If you are new here, welcome to Beloved, and be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a weekly video. And for those of you returning, welcome back. Today, I want to take a look at the Apostle Paul and an important lesson that we can learn from his life about what it really means to experience God's strength even in our weakness. Paul played a significant part in not only establishing the early church, but also writing much of the New Testament. Once a killer of Christians, Paul's conversion story to become a follower of Christ is truly fascinating. Throughout his writing, you can clearly see his laser-focused passion for sharing with non-believers the good news of Jesus Christ. His personal obedience and passion to God were fruitful. Many came to know Jesus Christ because of the persistent work of Paul. But this came with much sacrifice on his part. In Acts 9, 16, God says of Paul, For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Paul's ministry would be far from easy. In his second letter to the church of Corinth, we get a small understanding of the suffering Paul was required to endure for the sake of Christ. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being conceited. Paul received visions and revelations from God that he could boast about if he wanted to. However, he refuses to do so because he is committed not to boast in himself, but in God alone. Paul shares that to keep himself humble, God has given him a thorn in his flesh. We are not sure what this thorn is or why Paul decides not to go into more detail, but I think we can all relate to having thorns in our lives. Those persistent areas of suffering and weakness that we wish would just go away. Naturally, Paul requests of the Lord three times to remove this suffering, much like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, to which God answers, Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. From this scripture, we learn a great deal about suffering, weakness, and the power of God. We learn from Paul's experience that God will allow our strength to be sacrificed so that we may experience true and greater strength in him. We can only go so far in our own strength for the following reasons. One, our strength stifles our experiencing God's strength in our lives. Two, our strength limits us to only what we can do. And three, our strength can only serve as a temptation to boast in ourselves when our purpose is found in giving God glory. In God's response to Paul, we learn two significant lessons when dealing with difficulties in life. One, God's grace is sufficient. Paul will still be able to accomplish the purpose God placed on his life despite the difficulties that cause this weakness. Our weaknesses do not stop God's strength. Our weakness does not stop God's plan. Our weakness does not stop God's grace and love from showing up in amazing ways in our lives. Number two, God's strength is made perfect in weakness. The very thing that is making Paul weak is also the very thing that God is using to show his power through Paul's life. Our weakness is the key to God's strength in our lives. We experience God's grace and strength the most in our weakness. Once Paul grasps this truth, we see a shift in his heart and perspective on suffering. Where he initially pleaded with God multiple times to take away this thorn and messenger from Satan, he now says that he is glad about his weakness. He adds, for the sake of Christ then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Paul could have found contentment in his strength. In Philippians 3, Paul outlines a lengthy list of all his accomplishments, not to brag about them, but to say he considers them nothing compared to knowing Christ. He says, but whatever gain I had, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. Paul would rather be weakened by this thorn so he may have the power of Christ rest on him. All Paul wanted was Jesus. And if weakness was the key to God's power manifest in his life, he would gladly walk that path. Will we have the same resolve? Will we look at our weakness as a key to God's power or a stumbling block to our own plans? Are we willing to give up our strength, accolades, and praise of man because we truly believe Christ is greater? Will we see God's grace and strength even in our suffering? This was a massive perspective shift for Paul. As he initially cried out to the Lord to take away this thorn, he probably thought, if God just takes, away, takes this away, I can be more effective for ministry. If this burden is lifted, I'll be more fit for my purpose. Isn't that how most of us often look at the weakness in our lives as an obstacle or impediment preventing us from doing what we're called to do? But through Paul's thorn, God shows us he is more concerned with our character than what we do. It was more important to God for Paul to be humble and not conceited than to go on 10 more missionary trips because God is more concerned with who we are than what we do. God had a plan for Paul that did include things to do. Still, God was more concerned with what was going on on the inside of Paul's heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7 reminds us, For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. It's essential that we ask ourselves, am I more focused on my to-do list, vision board, or goals than being the woman that God wants me to be? Do we see God as a hindrance to our purpose or the only way to it? Our flesh will not like God's way because it does not include boasting of ourselves, but God alone. The two cannot go hand in hand. We lose ourselves and serve God or we serve ourselves and lose God. Jesus tells us, whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake, we'll find it. Many times God uses our weakness to help us lose ourselves so that we might find him and experience his grace and power. In such a competitive culture, many pride themselves in their own strength, but God grants the Christians something greater than that. We are gifted God's strength through our weakness. Paul shares that this thorn was given to him. He saw it as a gift that benefited him. The thing about gifts is we usually don't get to choose them. We trust the giver knows what's best. God being the ultimate giver does not take our pain and suffering lightly, but he will allow it to give us the greatest gift of all, himself. Now I want to hear from you, beloved. I challenge you to look at your weaknesses with a new perspective. Comment and let me know how you can see God showing up faithful, strong, and gracious in your life despite the thorns that you may feel slow you down and hold you back. Before you go, I want to share with you a free video Bible study and prayer guide I created just for you. It's called Worry Free and in it you'll learn the three major lies feeding your worry and the truth that can set you free. If you no longer want worry to control your decisions, feelings, actions, and you're ready to develop a stronger faith in God, visit BelovedWomen.org to download this free video study just for you. You'll also receive weekly videos to grow your faith and exclusive Beloved content we don't share anywhere else. If today's video was an encouragement to you, please be sure to share it with a friend because you just never know who might need some beloved encouragement today. And for even more beloved encouragement, including daily devotionals, Bible studies, and more, be sure to download the Beloved Women app available for free in the Apple or Google Play stores or visit us online at belovedwomen.org. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved. Today's video is brought to you by TheBelovedBoutique.com, providing Christian stationery to help you intentionally make time for God, including our Life Bible Journal. The Life Bible Journal was specially designed to guide you through your personal Bible study to help you practically understand and apply God's Word to your everyday life. See how simple and rewarding Bible study can be by getting your Life Bible Journal today at TheBelovedBoutique.com.